Let's talk about pharmacology. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Yona. I'm a third year podiatric medical student at CSPM and today I'm going to be sharing some tips and advice in order for you to be successful in your pharmacology class. To be honest with you guys, pharmacology is a really tough subject just because there's just a lot of information in pharmacology and you're going to have to memorize all that information and it's up to you how much effort you put in into this class in order for you to be successful. That's just the plain truth. However, with the tips and advice that I'm gonna give you today, I'm gonna to help relieve some of that tension and stress that you're feeling right now in order for you to be really successful in this class. So let's begin. So for my first tip and first advice for all of you guys is to look at suffixes for drugs. There are a lot of common suffixes amongst drugs in particular classes. My favorite one is LOL. Uh, my teacher used to make fun of that. He said like, that's a cool kid thing that you, you used to say, LOL, right? But the LOL drugs or the OLOL are the beta blockers. And just looking at a particular suffix like that, I already knew, okay, beta blocker, okay, that treats high blood pressure, right? There's other suffixes like prills. Prills are ACE inhibitors and those treat hypertension. So look for these suffixes because that will help you categorize drugs in particular drug classes and make your life 10 times easier when you see a drug on a particular test. My second tip and advice for you guys is try to use mnemonics. You know, try to make your own mnemonics or look up mnemonics online for particular drugs that you're just having a difficulty time remembering their mechanisms of actions or their ADRs, right? So for me, if particular drug class didn't have very common suffixes, I would make a mnemonic for myself. Uh, one particular mnemonic that I really liked was for proton pump inhibitor drugs, they, end, they ended in prazole and they were used to treat and prevent uh, intestinal ulcers. So my way of remembering all that was I pray to I pray to God to help with my stomach ulcers. And so I had the pray in that sentence for the suffix of those drugs and then the stomach ulcers uh, leading me to know to think, oh, these drugs help treat stomach ulcers. So that was my way of helping me remember those particular drugs. A very common mnemonic that is very popular amongst all pharmacology courses is the mnemonic dumbbells. Right, so if you have a cholinergic uh, overdose, dumbbells, that word, each letter uh, represents a particular side effect for taking cholinergic drugs. So that was a really nice way to remember all those side effects without having to memorize sentences long, you know? So try to use mnemonics if suffixes aren't working and try to use suffixes plus mnemonics together to mix and match things and personalize it your way to help you when you're taking an exam and looking at particular questions. My third tip for, I wanna share with you guys is try to memorize unique ADRs. Don't try to memorize the common ADRs such as GI disturbances, sleep disturbances, nausea, vomiting. You don't, you, okay, it's important to know those, especially when you're talking to a patient. But for testing purposes, your teacher is most likely gonna test you on the unique ADRs. For example, ethambutol, which is a mycobacterial tuberculosis drug, it's, it's unique ADR. There, there are common ADRs. There are other ADRs for that drug, but the most unique one is red-green color blindness. Wouldn't your teacher most likely could test you on that versus something like nausea as an ADR? Probably. So try to memorize the unique properties. Try to memorize what distinguishes that particular drug from another drug in another drug class. My fourth point that I'd like to share with you guys is to invest in this little book called Deja Vu. I love this book. I didn't use it as much as I would have liked to in my pharmacology uh, course, but I did find it very useful at times when I needed to look at a particular drug, go into the index, and then it would refer to a certain page. I'd go to that page for that drug I was interested in, and it had these questions over here that would that would basically, you would read the question and you would read the answer to that question and it would just tell you more information about that drug, anything that was 
that seems pretty important. And this book really did help through my time taking pharmacology for certain drugs that were really just weird or unique or just very common, but I couldn't find it on the internet. So I like this book just for reference as I was going through my course. The fifth tip I would like to share with you guys is uh, try to invest in the summary. I'm, I'm stressing this out now. The summary version of this book of Basic and Clinical Pharmacology by Katzing. This book is huge. I mean, if you read this book and memorized it, yes, you'd be a pharmacology god, but there is no way you have time for that. So there is a summary version of this book that I don't have with me right now, unfortunately, but it does a great job summarizing each chapter of this humongous book. And it's still by Katzen and Co, but it the summaries are great. It, it gives you the information that is really high yield, as well as it has end of the chapter questions that I used um, as a way to test myself on that particular chapter and the drugs of that chapter. And it helped me prepare for going to a pharmacology exam and feeling like the questions wouldn't surprise me at all because I was sort of doing these clinical based questions and it was really nice to just sort of get a general overview of how it was gonna be like. So definitely invest in the summary version of the basic and clinical pharmacology book. Not this humongous book, Unless you want to be the type of person who really wants to read this book and it will help you, sure. But definitely the summary version of this book will help you, uh, especially if you're doing like all-nighters. My sixth and final point for you guys is try to use something like sketchy pharmacology. I am a visual learner, but I didn't use sketchy pharmacology as much. But I know people who swear by sketchy pharmacology and use that particular program to help them through all of pharmacology. And Sketchy Pharm is great. I know for me that I was always having a difficult time remembering the drugs of coagulation and just the weird suffixes that are seen amongst those drugs and just the mechanisms of action just didn't make sense for me. So I watched about three to four videos for that and I had it down within an hour. So if you are a purely visual learner or if you're just having just a hard time putting mnemonics together and there's just no clear suffixes for drugs, try to use Sketchy Farm. With all that being said, hopefully the tips and advice I've given you guys in this video will help you succeed in your pharmacology course. I know for me, again, it was a difficult class. There was points where I was just like, crap, I don't know how to memorize all these drugs. But trust me, if you just utilize the tips and advice I've given you in this video, you will find success. Also, please leave a comment down below if you have any further advice for incoming students who are about to take this class, as well as hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification for future videos and classes that we'll be covering for tips and advice for those classes, as well as if you wanna learn more about the podiatric medical field, we're gonna keep posting videos about that. Anyways, guys, I hope you have a great day. Stay safe out there. Pod Squad signing out. Take care, guys.